Hi, I'm Chad with Move for a Guitar. This lesson is from our series Music Theory for a Guitar. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about major chord progressions that borrow chords from parallel minor keys or vice versa. First off, if you like the diagrams for everything in this series, including the diagrams for this lesson, you can download our free e-guide Music Theory for a Guitar. And this e-guide will be something that you can study and use as a reference for years to come. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to just go download it. This is part 4.16 from our series, Music Theory for a Guitar. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So we're going to talk about chord progressions again. And all the chord progressions we talked about up to this point have been diatonic to one key, meaning if it was in the key of C, for example, every chord would have been in the key of C. We wouldn't have taken any chord from any other key or changed keys in any way. In these next few lessons, we're actually going to talk about chord progressions that borrow chords from other keys or actually change keys. And this is a really important subject to understand. Although a lot of music is written in one key, there are even a lot of popular songs that you'll find that borrow chords or change keys. So it's an important subject to understand. And especially when you get into more advanced music, that happens all the time. So if you get into jazz or anything, in jazz music, the key can change quickly and often. So it's important subject to start understanding now. But like I said, even with basic popular progressions, you'll find a lot of progressions that either borrow chords or change keys in some way. And this is a really deep subject if you really want to dive into it. And I'm going to have a whole nother series dedicated to music theory for songwriting. But I think it's important to touch on it now and give you the basics. But like I said, it's way too deep of a subject to go too deep in these upcoming lessons. And I'll have other lessons that really dive into it later. So in this lesson, I'm going to explain how to take a major chord progression and borrow a chord or chords from the parallel minor key or vice versa, take a minor chord progression and borrow chords from the parallel major key. And I'll explain what I'm talking about. So you remember if you've gone through these lessons that every major key has a relative minor key. For example, in the key of C, we have a C major key right here but the relative minor key is A. So A minor is the relative minor key of C major. And C major is spelled out C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If you were to make the sixth, the new key center, the new key, which the sixth is the relative minor, that's A, then you would spell it out A, B, C, D, E, F, G, back to A. So all you've done is started on A and went from there because if you were on C, the relative major, this is right here, it's just C, D, E, F, G, A, B. But you should know that already if you've gone through these lessons. That's relative minor, but now I'm going to talk about something called parallel minor. And parallel minor is a really easy concept. For example, the key of C major, its parallel minor is the minor that starts with the same Name. So for example, we're looking at the minor keys now. C minor is the, rel is the parallel minor of C major. So basically all you're doing is instead of being C major, you're making it C minor. So if we were to look at it right here with chords, the key of C major is C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished. You know that already. Parallel minor of C major is C minor. And that's C minor, D diminished, E flat, F minor, G minor, A flat, B flat, C minor. So we're just taking the minor key with the same name. So C and C. So we're not looking at this as relative minor anymore. So these don't share the same chords like it does when you're talking about relative minor. Relative minor has all the same notes, all the same chords. You're just starting from a different spot. Parallel minor doesn't do that. This C minor is actually the relative minor of E flat major. So if we're to look back at our chart, C minor right here, its relative major is E flat. So now what we're going to do, since we have this knowledge, we can take any key. We're just going to start with C because it's the easiest key since there's no sharps or flats. 
Here is C major, all the chords in C major. Here's all the chords in C minor. And you don't have to have that memorized right now because you can just look at these two charts. Here are the major keys. Here are the minor keys. Here's C major, you already know this. Here's the chord names up above for minor, or for the triads and for the sevenths. Same thing for the minor chart. Here's C minor. Here's all the chord names for the minor in order. So you should already know how to do that if you've come this far in this series. And in this lesson, we're just going to talk about triads, but this will work for seventh chords. It'll work for any of the chord types we've gone over. I'm just doing triads to keep it simple. So what we're going to do, if C major was our key and we wanted a chord progression, you know we have all these chords to work with and we just put them in some sort of sequence, some sort of order, and that's a chord progression. But now what we're going to do is we're going to start in the key of C and use some of these chords from the key of C major, but then we're going to go down and borrow one or more chords from the key of C minor. And that's what the concept is. You're borrowing chords from the parallel minor key. For example, if we looked at this chord progression right here, C, F, G, and of course this is just starting over to C, are all in the key of C. A flat is not. A flat is actually in the key of C minor. So all we've done is taken A flat from the key of C minor and put it in with the chords from C major. So this chord right here is borrowed from the key of C minor, the parallel minor of C major. And if you were to write this out, it would be written like this. If you were to write out the chord names with the Roman numerals, it would be a one chord, four chord obviously from the key of C. This A flat a is the sixth of C, but this is a flat, so it's a flat six, and it's major, so that's why it's written in capitals. So A flat is the flat six major of C. So that's how it'd be written out. And then of course G is just part of the key of C. Again, it's a five chord. And don't worry too much about spelling it out as far as the Roman numerals right now. All you really have to worry about is thinking about and trying out taking one key, for example the key of C major, taking some chords from that key, putting them together, and borrowing one or more chords from the key of C minor, it, the parallel minor of whatever key you're in. Another example we could do is C major, F major, F minor, E flat, B flat, C. So now the only two chords in the key of C major are the C and the F, you know that's a one and a four, but then we've gone to the key of C minor, and borrowed an F minor, an E flat, and a B flat. And then if we were to write out the Roman numerals for this, we'd have the one and the four, obviously, because those are from the key of C. F is still a four, but we've used a minor, so this flat is actually not supposed to be there. That's a typo. So this F, F is the four of C, but it's minor, so now we have a minor four. Over here we have a major four written in capitals. Now we have a minor four written in lowercase. E is the third of C, but this is an E flat, so it's a flat three. And it's a major chord, so it's a flat three major. B is the seven of C, but it's a flat, so we have a flat seven, and it's a major, so it's a flat seven major chord. So that's how it'd be written out. Again, don't worry too much about that. All you have to really think about is the fact that we've started in the key of C, then we have borrowed chords from the key of C minor and then went back to C. And just try these out. Try out these chord progressions. You're going to see that it has a really cool sound and you'll even come across times where you've heard this before. A lot of bands do stuff like this. And that was going from a major key to its parallel minor. We can go the opposite. We can start in the key of C minor and then go to C major. So C minor and B flat are both in the key of C minor but this F is from the key of C major. So if we were to go C minor, B flat, F, it would be a one, seven in the key of C minor, and then a major four is the F. In the key of C minor, it would actually be a minor four, but if you're throwing in this F major, it would be a major four. So that's the concept so what I recommend is just starting in the key of C or whatever, it doesn't matter what key you start in, but this is written out for you. 
pick chords, put them together to where they sound good in the key of C, just put a sequence of chords together, and then go down to C minor and just borrow a chord, throw it in and see if it sounds good. And you can just start coming up with cool chord progressions that start in one key, borrow a chord from its parallel minor, and then go back to the major key. Or vice versa, if you're starting in a minor key, you could borrow from the parallel major. And you can come up, like I said, just with really cool hip sounding chord progressions doing this. And it keeps it from being just really obvious, the progression. You're actually going to take people for a little bit of a ride when they're listening. They wouldn't be expecting it as much to hear that happening. So it can make a lot more interest and it sounds really good if you just find ones that sound good together and try it out. So that's how to borrow chords from parallel minor or vice versa. Go ahead and move on to the next lesson where I'm going to talk about secondary dominance. So again we're going to talk about taking chord progressions and throwing in non-diatonic chords. So there'll be chord progressions that are in more than one key. And again be sure to download the e-guide. All these diagrams are in there and be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day.